great. Um, okay, welcome to the Northampton Bicycle Pedestrian Subcommittee meeting. We have a short agenda today for um, Wednesday the 14th. Um, this is audio recorded uh, and will live at Northampton Open Media if anybody cares to go um, in, at some future date to look at any public meeting they want, it'll be located there. We have, we don't have a full squad of people from the bike ped committee, but we'll, we've got a couple of items on the agenda. Um, so first up, let's do public comment on anything that's not otherwise on the agenda or any other issue. Does anybody have a public comment? Talk. Hello. Um, oh, okay. John Skibiski. Yes, ahead. I'd, I'd like nice to make to a, I noticed on your agenda that you have something on the Hatfield roundabout. I assume that's Hatfield Street. And I am a property owner in that area. And I would like to know who is initiating this topic of roundabout at this point. You're holding a city meeting on it. And uh, uh, Who's initiating the meeting or the, on the subject? Um, I put the item on the agenda and we can talk about it um, when we get to that point on the agenda. Yes, is it city sponsored or is it state? So um, it, I can describe that at the point on the agenda. It is um, state sponsored, but I can, fill everybody in at that time on the agenda. Yeah, I'd like to know when the state has initiated its interest. It was supposed to have been sometime in the future and, and it's of concern. The neighborhood is buzzing at this point and uh, some information is needed. Okay. John, can, can, we wait, can we wait till that agenda item and then deal with it yeah. then? Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Any other public comments? Okay, um, so the first okay. item of, um, oh, go ahead, sorry, Brett. Thanks, um, I was just speaking with a, a coworker and a um, fellow uh, bicyclist who uh, was curious about two items. And so I just wanted to bring them here as, as public comment. Um, one is the uh, 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 questions that always come up this time of year, snow removal on the trails. Um, I have a longer memory than this person does in town of when things were not cleared at all um, outside of the, you know, stop and shop to Florence trail. And now it's much better, but we can always work to um, continue to clear more trails. And so he was wondering what the status of that project would be. And secondly, uh, what's the status who's responsible for uh, resurfacing the trails, particularly the one behind Stop and Shop up to Florence as that one's deteriorating quickly. And I, we may have talked about this recently, but I couldn't remember. So if you could remind me, I'd appreciate it. Thanks. Sure. Um, so the first um, issue about snow clear, I mean, well, both of these are maintenance issues. So they belong in DPW's bucket. Um, um, fortunately, neither Maggie nor Donna are here today. Um, <clears throat> but generally, the way I understand it, and I haven't had a recent conversation with Donna about this, uh, generally, the way I understand it is that they had started clearing the main um, um, bike path, uh, the initial bike path from Stop and Shop to Florence excuse me, um, and did that as a, initially sort of as a pilot and make sure that they um, had the staffing and capacity to do that. And then it became uh, more consistent and they were committed to, to doing that um, for the, you know, permanently. And they took that on permanently. Um, I think as we add 
bike paths, it's always going to be a question to, as to DPW's capacity to be able to clear snow on the bike paths. So I think it, it is important to sort of keep that on the table as part of the conversation. And I can certainly pass the information to Donna. I will say that about a month ago, and it may, I don't know that anything's gotten any better, but um, she had not been able to hire a full complement of snow um, clearing uh, staff personnel. And um, she was um, feeling a little desperate at that moment and even suggested that maybe she would open it up to other city employees. Anybody and everybody who could drive a pickup truck <laughs> would be welcome. Um, so, you know, part of that, I think, was in jest, but the other part was just sort of a, an expression of her concern that we really just, she did not have personnel even to clear the streets. And so my guess is, and, and I think I've heard her say before that, you know, she needs to clear the streets first and make sure that the, you know, um, streets are cleared for kids to go to school. Obviously bike path is, the bike paths are used for kids to go to school as well. Um, but um, I guess I'll just leave it at that because it's not, I don't know much more than that, but I do know that there's a hiring issue now at the DPW and it's been that way all summer with their summer, um, you know, seasonal staff and it's continued into the winter. So that may be the issue, the acute issue right now, maybe capacity with um, staffing, um, but sort of the longer term picture, I think is important to think about as well and sort of figure out a structure that allows us to build in that capacity as a community. Um, and I, I, you know, that's what I can say about that. The other piece about um, resurfacing, I, I've come across, people have asked me about this as well. Again, DPW is in, it's a maintenance issue um, and it really needs to be programmed as part of that. We sometimes, our office, um, has been able to secure design funding and sometimes construction funding for um, infrastructure that typically falls under the DPW jurisdiction or purview. Um, but bike paths are also part of, you know, resurfacing and maintenance of bike paths are part of the pool of um, infrastructure that is, um, to which chapter 90 monies can be applied. And so there are sort of regular funding streams that can be used for that. But again, sort of channeling Donna's comments that I've heard her say before, you know, that's a limited pot as well. And so we have all these streets, miles of streets to maintain, and um, that includes bike paths. And so it's just a balancing act of, you know, how we manage um, that limited pool of funds and what be what becomes a priority. <clears throat> but it's important for, I, I guess, in order, so as we think about balancing those priorities, it's important for people who are concerned about um, the bike path and this section of bike path that really hasn't been significantly touched for almost 40 years, um, is elevated to a level through, you know, your any advocacy um, option possible, including city councilors, ward councilors, um, other folks who can help carry that voice and raise the level of importance so that it becomes part of the conversation of how some of these. Um, Sort of typical funding streams get allocated for different projects. Um, and um, yeah. Elena? Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, I just wanted to add on to that. I know DPW does um, like a pavement survey. They had contract that out every year and it's 25% of our roads get surveyed. So every four years we have a 100% picture of what our road conditions are. Um, and so 
I guess, just for the public record, and I can definitely follow up with Donna and DPW about this, but making sure that the bike path is included in that audit, um, portions of the bike path every four years. So we have a hundred percent outlook of what the bike paths, bike paths condition is, um, similar to what we do for roadways. And I think, um, it's just consistently raising this, like you said, Carolyn, and, um, making sure that, um, bike paths are treated and bike lanes are treated just like roadways because they are viable forms of transportation for a lot of members of our community. Thanks, Glenn. Thanks so much for taking time with those two things, Carolyn and Elena. Um, I agree that advocacy is really important um, and we should keep talking about it. It's possible that on a future meeting we should, we might want to think about recommending to the TPC that these bits be specifically included, the, the survey of the paths included with the roads, and if they aren't already, I don't know. And um, in more short term, that section of path be prioritized sooner rather than later. Um, for the snow, I guess we'll just have to keep cycling through that. We'll see, no pun intended. Thanks for now. All right. Thanks, Brett. Okay. Northampton High School crosswalk. Um, James um, Lowenthal asked that this be put on the agenda. He's not here. He didn't send me any other comments except for what he had sent to the Gazette um, and to the mayor. So, um, you know, the obviously this city is well aware of the problem at this location. And I think Donna relayed back at one of the previous meetings over the last couple of months, either at TPC or at Bikeped, that um, she was still waiting on the results from the engineering study. Um, as it relates to the um, issue of lighting the crosswalk, um, it's certainly a much bigger problem now that we're in this period of the year where um, we have less daylight. Um, I think the city is considering um, putting a pedestrian scale light on the high school side of the crosswalk, um, but I don't know what moves they've um, Donna has taken in that regard. I know it's been a topic of conversation. And so that's all I personally have on this, but you know, we'll definitely open it up to um, anyone else who wants to make a comment. Um, anyone on the committee before I open it up to Elena? Okay, great, go for it, Elena. <laughs> Um, so I'm just, I mean, we've been waiting for this report for some time and last, I, I was in a conversation with the mayor back in October and she was like any day now, um, and here we are two months later. So I'm just curious, like what day, <laughs> like when, and you might not know the answer. Maybe this is a question for Donna, but, um, it has been delayed a lot. And, um, I mean, another student was hit just a couple weeks ago. So, um, I don't know, I feel like we should, as advocates, you know, put a little pressure on the city to put pressure on the consultants who are doing the study. Um, and that's just generally like, when is it coming? <laughs> yeah, um, I don't have an answer. I am because I'm not part of that process. I wasn't part of, and, and I, it, you know, that was a DPW contract. And so um, I don't have any insight on that. Um, but I don't disagree that, you know, um, it's been a long time and that we should probably already have seen something that would, would have hoped anyway, that we would have seen something that doesn't. But I also think that, like you said, I think there are other things that could be done in the short term 
that even that may not discount what the long term, you know, solution might be at that, or it could be something that's sort of a light touch um, modification while we wait for sort of the big construction project that um, uh, more permanently improves the safety at that um, intersection. One of those things I would, I mean, I would have to agree. It's it's very um, dark on the high school side of that crosswalk, no matter how slowly a vehicle is going. If someone pops out of the dark, the driver isn't going to see them. And so I think that's certainly something that um, could be addressed immediately without having a negative impact on the potential of a future sort of long-term fix to that intersection. Yeah, and I'd also, I mean, traffic cones, like there's a lot of like really basic temporary things that we can do to slow traffic. Um, it's a really complicated, I go through that intersection often, I live nearby it and I go through it on my bike and also in my car and it's knowing the history of the intersection, I'm always extra careful, but it is really challenging um, navigating it. And I see, I mean, enforcement could also be another thing because I see cars turning left off of Woodlawn onto Elm Street a lot and during rush rush hour. Um, and, you know, it's just, there's a lot going on in the intersection. I think like traffic cones could slow people who are coming from Florence down on Elm Street because that road really does widen quite a bit going into the intersection, um, you know, a, I don't know what the signs are called, but like a, a sign that says, you know, slow down, school, something of that sort, um, you know, that we typically have on construction sites to really alert people that, you know, they're coming into a particularly dangerous intersection. I think those are all really temporary solution or can help um, bring us closer to a solution while we are waiting for that report. And I know the city removed parking on the Child's Park side of the street, which has been, you know, amazing and definitely allows for visibility for folks and everyone seems to have found parking for their car um, elsewhere, which is great, but it's just really, um, it's really troubling that like that's kind of the only thing we've done at, as a city to I mean, that and the study, which we're still waiting on. And so I, I really would push the city to think creatively around some super temporary things like cones and like a, a marquee to to signal that um, to cars to slow down. Um, yeah. Uh, Prima? Um, beyond the urgency of this particular challenge at the high school, this makes me think of the conversation we've had about the need to address both the speed limit and just traffic uh, travel, vehicular, vehicular travel in general. Um, and I'm just wondering if it's worth or if, if uh, your department uh, or, or anybody in the city has looked into any other initiatives that are happening across the nation or in other communities uh, you know, in other parts of the world to to address the issue of pedestrian safety, bicycle safety that could be implemented citywide. Not that I see a simple solution happening in the short term, but as a long term initiative. And I know that com topic has come up, but it seems to me that they're going to continue to be these issues. And from my travel around the city, there are plenty of intersections that are dangerous, even if there hasn't been an accident yet. Um, and it just seems like that's that's worthy of some kind of long range plan. And, and I was just wondering if if any such thing is being examined or looked into. Well, I can respond to that. Um, um, I mean, basically, yes, the solution, and we've talked about this in previous meetings, is a physical adjustment to all the streets. I mean, signage, speed limit regulations are really not gonna do anything to improve safety. Um, and so what we've done in that regard, and, I, and cities around the country um, have done that. I mean, I think I, I would hazard that the our country has, um, maybe more of a unique problem than other countries because our streets are so wide and we have 
um, so many more vehicles and sort of this history of the love of vehicles is going really fast. Um, so, but the, the solution is physical, you know, modification. And so to that end, we've done, we have a complete streets policy. We have complete streets implementation. We have just come off the heels of, the, of a revised and updated complete streets prioritization plan. So all of those things are setting us up for the ability to be um, competitive for funding cycles to make those improvements. Um, and changes to improve pedestrian and bicycle safety, not just at intersections, but also along all you know corridors. Um, as it relates to this intersection in particular, you know the concept of cones I think makes sense, although not probably. But I I would suggest that something more um, less mobile. <laughs> Um, it would be appropriate because cones can get popped easily out of the way. And um, so we've used Jersey barriers um, for lack of better word, big concrete blocks. Um, you know, we use them all throughout COVID in downtown. And so we have these um, pieces of equipment that um, I think sort of act in the same or could act in the same way that a cone does. Um, in appropriate places, um, and then the snow plows could work around them and we wouldn't have to worry about replacing them. I don't know why um, BPW hasn't um, gone ahead and done that. They're clearly temporary solutions. I think it had been suggested previously and um, they opted not to do that. Um, but I guess, you know, depending on, I, I think it's fair if the committee wants to make a recommendation to TPC that something be done more quickly than waiting for a permanent solution. Um, and maybe that's the way to elevate it and move it forward. Nick. Uh, thanks, Carolyn. I, I really like that idea. I'm not sure what a, what a quorumless um, bike ped committee can do today, but this is unfortunately a medium term, long term problem as well. Um, but I think kind of communicating that, um, 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 you know, the, kind of the urgency of that, because it, it does sound, as you've described, there are kind of three groups. There's, there's the, you know, DPW, Board of Public Works, there's us and also the um, transportation parking. So I think it would be helpful to kind of be saying, if we can, um, such a communication at some point. Um, and just to clarify, we do have a quorum because we have four seven, so we have four seven. So oh, great! You're fine. Okay. I'm, I'm, <laughs> That's I'm, why I went ahead with the meeting. Otherwise, it would have shut it down. <laughs> okay. 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 Um, so I, I'll also move we approve the minutes if that's uh, something we need to do at some point. Um, um, but um, um, okay, yes, I do think that would be enormously helpful, um, Carolyn, to be able to communicate. Okay. Um, some of our sense of this, because I worry just there's a kind of a sense of we don't really want to act because we haven't heard from bike ped. I think this is our time to chime in. Um, does somebody want to make a motion to that effect? <laughs> so we can make it official. And it, is there something specific that you want to recommend um, that be done in the near term? I mean, not necessarily so specific that it you know, it might not be acted upon, but maybe something conceptually specific. <laughs> so I, I mean, I, like mobile barriers or something. Yeah, you know? I, I, I think kind of acknowledging that while we're still waiting for, you know, for the report, um, um, you know, we believe there's urgency in uh, exploring options that might include such things as physical barriers of a more temporary nature um, or other improvements or modifications that um, as well as the longer term planning um, that, we, that we know needs to happen. Okay. So I heard that as a motion. Does anybody want to second that? <laughs> okay, uh, you're muted Freeman, but I understood what your sign language was that you would second that. <laughs> okay. So um, we're on Zoom, so I'm just going to take a roll call. Um, Freeman? 
That was a yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah, Nick. Yes. And Brett. Yes. Okay. Great. And Carolyn. <laughs> um. Okay. So the next item is um, I had this on there. Is this about the Hatfield Roundabout? We had been um. So this, as you all know, uh, there was a design that had been, the city had facilitated um, and it had been on the tip. Um, DOT had um, gone out to bid for contracting for the roundabout at North King Street in Hatfield. Um, the bid was, issue, uh, bid was um, issued, the contractor was enabled, and then um, um, due to concerns um, raised about um, at, at that location about um, in particular uh, Native American archaeological artifacts, um, DOT pulled back and said they wanted to take another look at it. Um, so that was, I'm sorry, don't, I think that was two years ago. Um, if I recall correctly, almost two years ago now. I'll have to pull up that when that happened. But um, DOT has since um, taken over the design part, part of this to try to address it. Obviously, there's still safety issues um, for vehicles and all um, users of that intersection, those who are not in vehicles. And so, um, I mean, that was the whole reason why it was put forward initially as a design. So they know that this intersection needs to be addressed. Um, and so they have taken over the design. They had um, contacted us during the summer and said that they were going to put together 25% design and restart the process and wanted to set a public hearing. We, were, we set a date for a public hearing about a month ago for January 10th um, in city council chambers and on Zoom. However, I haven't seen the official posting from DOT. So I don't know if they it had some internal conflicts with that date and are looking at another date. But I just had this on the agenda to uh, let you know that we had assumed it was gonna be January 10th. <laughs> Um, so at 6.30 p.m. Um, and that's about all I have on that um, item. Does anybody on the committee have any questions? Obviously, I realize this has been a contentious issue, Carolyn, but the safety issues are just huge and I imagine have not gotten any better. I was impressed with some of the sidewalk improvements because there is uh, a, um, a, a kind of gradual improvement from the big Y complex, the other side of the street, um, sure. but it's just feels hazardous for people um, in and around there in so many ways. But. Right, and those sidewalk extensions were gonna go up Hatfield Street um, to Cook Avenue, um, which was also an important piece of that project. Um, so I guess where I have left messages with DOT to try to figure out the timing and I'd be happy to just, um, I mean, obviously if it's still a go, then I'll get the public notice and I can put it posted on our website and I'll let everybody know. Um, but, um, you know, if you want to mark your calendars tentatively for the 10th, that would be great. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Carolyn, um, I, I, it's generally been our policy and practice that uh, public comment is solicited for items not on the agenda, and then the public is allowed to br bring the similar kind of public comment forward on specific items. Is mm -hmm. I just wanted to make sure John was understood that as well, and maybe it was just the yeah. date was helpful. Yeah. John, do you have any comments you want to make now that we're on this agenda item? Sorry, John, you're, you're muted. muted. You're muted, Sorry, John. John. You're still, 
you're still muted. Sorry. I'll Okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yep. it's, it's interesting to know that uh, they're uh, getting started once again. They had mentioned, according to the newspaper, that they were giving the project over to some private organization. Uh, well, that was newspaper uh, recording, it, so it's probably not too accurate. Uh, but nevertheless, the indication was that they were putting it off to some uh, other organization to design uh, the uh, system there, the program that they wanted to implement. But uh, <clears throat> uh, it is in litigation still. And uh, uh, there's no resolution yet in regards to uh, activities that took place there. And uh, I assume that uh, something will be coming up fairly soon uh, uh, on it. But uh, uh, I would say that if you're going to have a, a public meeting on it, it should be also in the newspaper. Not everybody has a computer, and a lot of news slips by them about meetings and agendas and things of that nature. And I would think a, 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 a couple of good articles in the newspaper would alert people that this meeting is there for their uh, purposes. And uh, uh, that's all I can say at this point. And uh, apparently they have an interest to, uh, the DOT has an interest to uh, continue there. And uh, so we'll just have to wait for their meetings to uh, come up. So I'll be interested to know if there is a change in the January 10th meeting. But thanks for your help in, with information. Yeah, so um, DOT often hires outside engineers to help them with design. So they haven't turned the project over. They've contracted with an engineer to do to come up with an alternative design. Okay. And Thank they you. are the ones. They are the ones that post the the notices in the Gazette. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, that's all I have on that one. If anybody else has any comments, oh, Nick. On, on a somewhat related 25% design phase, do we have a date for the main street or, sorry, I don't mean to, um, um, anyways, I'm, I'm asking innocently here. Carol, I'm I know. Apologies. So hold on just a second. So tomorrow we're meeting with our design team again. I'm hoping they'll have um, news for us it has been troublesome to me <laughs> that we haven't heard back from DOT about that 25% design hearing date. And the last we heard, I think I relayed at the last meeting, but I can't, I can't honestly, I can't remember, is that our consultants thought that now we were looking at the end of January. But as I understand it, they need 30 days to, advertise it so we're getting you know it's mid-december i and i haven't heard of any dates for us to hold yet so i don't know but i'm hoping i'll find more information out tomorrow good luck that sounds frustrating uh, yeah i mean we can only do what we can do to to encourage them and it's all on their schedule so um so then i guess the last item is minutes yay so exciting <laughs> um any modifications to the minutes or did i hear a motion to approve in a second i'll make a motion to approve the minutes okay a second thank you Okay, um, I'll do a roll call. Brett? Yes, approve. Uh, Nick? Yes. Uh, Freeman? Yes. Great, thank you. Any other last items that anybody wants to talk about before we sign off? Stay All right. Well, take care, everybody.
Yeah, have a great end of the year, you guys, and we'll see you in January. Thanks. Thank, thanks, Carolyn. Should well. we put a, a note on the next agenda to discuss alternate meeting times? Um, sure, I can do that. Okay, thanks. Yep. yep. We may it not make any changes, but at least we can discuss it fully with maybe a few sure. other realtors present. Thanks, Carolyn. Yeah, no problem.